Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Thank you for being back here in my kitchen. It feels like it's been forever since we've been in the kitchen together. We got back from the HOA conference on Sunday night and I quickly came down with a head cold. So today is Thursday and I've kind of just been laying low and not doing much, but today I finally feel better. I might not sound 100%, but I feel 100% better. So we're gonna have fun today. We're gonna make some dinner and dessert. We are going to attempt to make lasagna soup. I've seen this recipe going all around online and I went shopping downstairs in my pantry and I had all the ingredients. So we're gonna make that for dinner tonight and along with some blueberry pie bars or blueberry oat bars. I haven't decided. I have blueberries in my freezer from last year that need to be used up. And then I grabbed some pectin because today we're also going to go pick up our Azure haul. I just have a small haul and we need to go pick up some produce from a local produce stand. But one of the things I got in Azure, we need pectin for. I don't know if we're going to get to that project today, but I just brought it up while I was down there. And I am completely out of fresh produce between us trying to work on getting everything taken care of before we left out of town and me coming home and feeling sick. We've just eaten every single thing that's out of this refrigerator. And now I no longer have a garden. Our farmer's market is closed for the year. So instead of going grocery shopping, because I don't really need to go to the grocery store, we have a local produce stand that we're gonna go to and we're just gonna pick up some fresh produce there together. But before we head and go pick up our Azure haul and go to the local produce stand, I thought, let me show you what I got at HOA. I wanted to show you my little HOA haul. I am so glad I bought this. This is a ginger turmeric ox smell, and it has ginger, turmeric, black pepper, honey, and apple cider vinegar. I have been taking this every day, helping with my head cold. It's just an anti-inflammatory. We're gonna attempt to make this homemade with the ginger and turmeric we grew. If you watched me show you her stand, my ginger and turmeric is nowhere near as beautiful as the ginger and turmeric she grew and then made this out of but we are going to try to make it together. This stuff tastes delicious and I think it's really been helping. And then another thing I got is I've been looking for a more natural makeup and skincare line. I buy my makeup and deodorant and skincare products at Walmart or Winco or just my local store. And I know I can probably do better with the ingredients. I, our skin is our biggest organ. I am excited that I found this company. This is a husband and wife run company. They started this company because their son suffered from extreme eczema. And I have suffered from that in the past right now. Thankfully, it's under control. But I know what that's like. And so they use tallow as their base because that is a really good fat that helps with eczema. And so they have expanded their line from like lotions and balms to makeups and deodorants. And so that is what I got. I'm really excited to support this company. I bought two of their deodorants. One of them is for Josh, one is for me. I've been using this since we got home and I really like it. They are aluminum free and I'm happy about that. I've also been using the powder and mascara. I have yet to use the foundation because I bought a bunch of makeup for my mom as well. And we on accident swapped colors. So this is my mom's color and my mom has my color. So. When we swap back, I will be able to try this out. But so far, I'm really, really happy with them. And I can link them down below along with this and this next thing that I got. I'm so excited about this. This is a candle that's in a wooden candle holder. And I bought it to put right here on my island because I thought it was so pretty. But the cool thing about this candle company is they sell refill kits. So you don't have to toss or get rid of your candle holder when your candle is done. I got the pumpkin clove and it smells phenomenal, but for half the price, you can buy these refill kits. It comes with the scent already mixed in with the wax and the directions on how to melt the wax and the wicks. So you can just refill your holder and you can reuse this as many times as you want because on their website, they sell a bunch of different refills and I got a different scent for my refill, so how cool is that? So I'm really excited about that. Now let's go ahead to the produce store, pick up our Azure haul, I'll show you what I get, and then we're gonna come back and make a delicious dinner. I'm excited to have a home-cooked dinner, not just random things that I found in the house, and then we are going to make a yummy dessert as well.
I figured because I didn't need anything other than produce, I would try to support this local produce stand and it was fun to go in there. But to my surprise, it was half empty today because it had sold ownership in the last month and they are rebranding and putting in all these new shelves and there's going to be a bunch of new items. And so I'm excited to see how it transforms over the next month or so. This is where I used to buy my raw milk and then they stopped buying it for a while. And I was driving 45 minutes to get my raw milk and that's just not practical in how busy I am. So I was talking to the cashier and they asked, was there anything that we would like to see? And I mentioned that I hope they get raw milk back so that I could pick it up on a regular basis again. And here is me picking up my Azure haul. If you've never heard of Azure, I can link it down below. You buy in bulk, typically not everything is in bulk, but there is a truck and it comes to a location and then everyone helps unload the truck and then you load your stuff up in your car and you get your Azure haul. So it's kind of a fun, unique way to buy groceries. Now we're all loaded up and we're gonna go back to the house. We just got back from Azure. I'm gonna show you the haul. It's a really small haul this time. I really didn't need that much. It was really just two things that I wanted or needed and then a few other things just fell into my cart. So the number one thing that I wanted were these five pound red raspberries that are frozen. I actually put these in my order last month but they didn't ship. So I really wanna make raspberry jam. I haven't had raspberry jam in the house in two years. And that is what this is for. I grew a bunch of raspberries this last year, but not enough to make jam. And the raspberries at the farmer's market were just way out of my price range. So this was a really good price and we're gonna make jam tomorrow. I really like these sea salt and lime chips. So I got two bags of these. We also needed, and we were out of cinnamon. So that is one of the other things that I really needed this month. So I ordered one pound of cinnamon. I go through a lot of cinnamon, especially this time of year. And I'm getting close to being out of organic cocoa powder. So that is what this is. This is an equal exchange brand. So it is a fair trade. So I am happy about that. So it's one pound of cocoa powder. And then here I have some raspberry leaf tea. I'm gonna start drinking this every day per my doctor's recommendations. So that is now going to be part of my routine and I'm looking forward to having some warm tea. For some freezer meals we're gonna be doing, we needed some green chilies. So I ordered these, these were on sale this month, so I was glad to see those through Azure. I also wanted to get some carrots in the house. These will last a long time. This was a good price. As you all know, my carrot harvest was really sad this year and so I like to keep carrots on hand, I use them in cooking and I like to make salads with them. Just shredded carrot salads are so delicious. So that's what that is for. And then I got a couple convenience things. One thing that I did, I grew and I grew a lot of them but not enough to preserve and that is some frozen green beans. I prefer frozen green beans over canned green beans. All the frozen vegetables were on sale this month so I got three bags. I probably should have bought a few more but I just got three bags of frozen green beans. This is convenience. I never buy diced frozen carrots and peas, but I thought for convenience, for making fried rice and stuff like that, this would be a really nice convenience food. So I bought three bags of those and three bags of just plain peas. Josh and I are a big fan of peas. And then you all saw that I did grow a ton of potatoes this year. I'm so happy with my potato harvest, but we're gonna be making breakfast burritos and breakfast casseroles. And I didn't really wanna use my homegrown potatoes for that because these are just so convenient. So I bought some hash browns, some frozen hash browns, and we're gonna use those for some breakfast items. And I'm really excited to have those. These were on sale as well. And that is why I bought 12 bags. This is my new favorite yogurt. So I bought two of these. That was the perfect amount to last one month for us last time. So I got two of these. Josh and I have been enjoying yogurt and granola with our homemade jams. And I have finally used all of my granola. I've been trying to go through. I bought granola through Azure a while ago and I bought way too much and it's good. Not our favorite. I like my homemade better. And so probably tomorrow when we make the homemade raspberry jam, I'm going to be making a big batch of granola as well 
and we will enjoy that with this plain yogurt and some homemade jam. We got some cottage cheese. We're actually gonna use this in tonight's dinner for the lasagna soup. I'm gonna use this instead of ricotta cheese because Azure doesn't sell ricotta cheese. Two things of sour cream. We used all of the tomato paste during our canning session this year, so I got a whole case of tomato paste. I really like this tomato paste. I like the texture of it, and I like that it's in glass jars. And then that was my Azure haul. So pretty small haul this go around. For dinner tonight, I thought it would be good to roast up some cauliflower. So I got two because these are really small heads of cauliflower. So we're gonna roast these up for dinner tonight. And then I bought this honey. This is a local honey that's raw from a local producer in my area. And I really wanted it because I like this squeeze bottle, this teddy bear. Right now I just have my honey in a jar. And I think that for ease of use, this is gonna be really nice to have and I can refill it with my bulk honey. So that's why I bought that guy. I got some honey crisp apples. These are in season right now and they are so delicious. I'm enjoying these as a dessert, so we got some of those. These are the last of in season peaches, so I just got four of those. They need to ripen just a little bit, so I'll let them sit on the counter and we will enjoy these as well. Bananas, three pretty large zucchinis. I got four things of cilantro, no, three things of cilantro and one thing of parsley. I tested out freeze drying the cilantro and that is so good, so much better than dehydrated. So what my plan with the majority of this cilantro is to freeze dry it so that I can have cilantro all the time. It is so good freeze dried, completely different flavor than dehydrated. And last but not least, I picked this up to put my coffee, just some half and half. So that is our groceries that will probably last us a good long time. I'm gonna have to get back into a rhythm of how often I wanna go grocery shopping now that the garden is done and all of that. So that'll just last us until it lasts us. Between what I have downstairs and the frozen veggies and the freezer meals we already have and all that stuff, I'm pretty set. So now what I gotta do is put all of this stuff away. A couple of these items are going downstairs into the food pantry room. So I just grabbed a box and I'm gonna put those items in this box and Josh is gonna bring those downstairs for me. He has been so helpful in carrying my canned goods and all my goodies from up here to down there so I don't have to truck up and down those stairs as much. But I think things like this raspberries, I'm gonna put these in the freezer up here, even though these technically should go in a downstairs freezer. I'm gonna keep them up here because we're gonna make something out of them tomorrow. I don't know about for you, but when I get sick and it kind of forces me to rest and not be, in quotes, productive, then I tend to have some anxiety about that. And what I'm trying to learn is that rest is productive. Rest can be productive. You don't need to feel lazy if you need to take the time to relax, whether you're sick or not. And that's something that I've really been working on. But I do have to say it feels good to finally be up and around, moving my body, and getting things done. Now, I've never been a big fruit person, but fruit is something that I've been really enjoying lately, and I've been really enjoying that for breakfast and also for dessert. There's something so yummy about eating a cold apple or cold peach late at night, because I do have a sweet tooth, so I do enjoy having something sweet, and fruit has really been kind of filling in that gap for me, even though today we make dessert, but I don't make dessert all that often, so I've really been enjoying fruit. We're just getting, this is the box that I'm gonna ask Josh to take downstairs, and he is getting to know where things go, which is nice. We are gonna refill our cinnamon and cocoa powder. I do have these two containers that I keep in my baking drawers. I have to say thank you for everyone who gave me the suggestions of putting the baking stuff in those drawers. That has been so helpful. You'll see that when we do some baking later on today that how convenient it is to have it right there. But I do have these two containers that I keep in those drawers and then I do have some bulk containers where I will put the extra spices and so that I can refill these. But I was basically out of cinnamon and out of cocoa powder, which is not good going into the fall 
and going into baking season. I'm really excited to start processing the pumpkins. We didn't grow too many winter squash this year, but we definitely grew enough where we're gonna be able to make some really yummy pumpkin and winter squash desserts. And we certainly need cinnamon in order to do that. All I'm gonna do to store this is just roll it up, put a clip on it, and now we are ready to have fun in the kitchen. It's time to start cooking. We've got all the groceries put away. I'm really excited about that. I'm ready to be in the kitchen once again with you all. So I was going through the freezer earlier this morning and I found some blueberries that need to be used up. So I was just on the internet looking up recipes and I found this blueberry pie bar recipe that looks fantastic. So we're gonna make this right now. So in this bowl, I have a half a cup of butter and we're gonna make the bottom crust and the top crumble part. I will link this recipe down below. And to this, we need to add a half a cup of granulated sugar and a half a cup of all-purpose flour. Oh, sorry, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So this is a half cup, so we're gonna add three of these. I'm loving having my baked goods right here. It's making it so easy. Then we're gonna add a half a cup of brown sugar. And salt. And that's the only ingredients we need for the crust and the crumble. And we're gonna mix that together. And it says it's gonna be a dry, crumbly mixture. I always use salted butter and I always add salt to my baked goods. You want to make sure you're seasoning your desserts just as well as you would season your food. And I just think that we should season every layer of it and that is why I always use salted butter because I think it tastes better. And I use salt in my desserts. So this is coming together, it is definitely dry. I'm glad they made that note in the recipe. So you can see it's kind of crumbly. I'm gonna get in there with my hands a little bit and just make sure it's mixed in fully. It smells fantastic. And then it says to reserve a heaping three-fourths cup. So this is a one cup, so I'm just gonna do kind of like a little bit less than one cup to the side. And then I have a nine by nine baking dish here, and it says to line it. Now we have our crust all ready, so we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna make one of the layers. There's three layers to this. So in here, we're gonna add one egg. It says one third cup of sugar, but I'm only gonna add a quarter cup, a half a cup of Greek yogurt, teaspoon of vanilla. That was probably more like a tablespoon and one tablespoon of flour. Then we're supposed to mix this together. And then we pour the yogurt mixture on top of our crust. This I think is what's gonna make these bars really special. And then we're just gonna spread it out a little bit. And in the same bowl, I don't see the need in getting another bowl dirty, so I'm gonna put this away. I'm all about less dishes if we can prevent them. We're gonna put two cups of blueberries in here. You can see these blueberries definitely need to be eaten. That was probably more than two cups. And again, it says a third a cup of sugar. I'm only gonna do a fourth of a cup. I'm gonna put the juice of half a lemon, two tablespoons of flour. The recipe calls for cornstarch, but I don't know where my tapioca starch is, so I'm just gonna use flour instead. And we're gonna mix that together. And it said that it's okay if the sugar and flour is not dissolved, which it's not, because it will dissolve as it cooks.
And then it says take our crumbles and kind of push them in your hands together so they form kind of crumbly bits. How pretty is that? So what we're going to do now is put it in a 350 degree oven. for 60 or so minutes, so this is perfect. So we have our dessert in the oven, and we can whip up some whipped cream to go on top, because I have that. And while that is cooking, we will start on dinner. This soup recipe looks pretty easy to put together, so we're gonna get it put together here real quick. So the first thing we're gonna do in our Dutch oven is warm up just a little bit of olive oil and we're gonna brown our sausage. This is sausage that I purchased from a local farmer. And I've been, I did not put a deposit down on a whole hog soon enough this summer, and I can't seem to find one, so I'm gonna to have to ration my pork because I'm getting a little bit low on my ground Italian sausage. And I try to buy the majority of my meat from local farmers as much as possible pork and beef being the main two that I like to purchase from local farmers. So we're gonna get this in here, and while this is browning, we're going to process our vegetables. I just got my hands washed. We're gonna put our canned goods over here. We're gonna cut our vegetables over here. And when I was putting food away, the groceries, I found some zucchinis that I had purchased from a local farm when I went to the pumpkin patch and I forgot that I had these, so we need to use these up. So instead of doing cauliflower, we're gonna have zucchini for dinner. I'm gonna cook that on our cast iron, which I store in the oven. I don't know if any of you guys store your cast irons in the oven, but I do. These are the goodies we need for our soup tonight. It feels good being back in the kitchen and being inspired by making delicious food. I find it therapeutic to just chop and dice and simmer and saute and enjoy mixing and matching flavors. Halfway through processing the vegetables, I went ahead and I wanted to make sure I kept a close eye on the sausage as well but I find it to be very a creative process. I wouldn't consider myself a super creative person, but cooking is one of those things where you really can just kind of let your creativity go. What I usually do is I'll, if it's a new recipe to me, something I've never made before, I will do some Googling and I'll look up, you know, three or four recipes and I will kind of combine them and make them my own. I find recipes to be a jumping off point or a guideline. Obviously, if you're baking, well, you saw that I did not follow the recipe when I was baking those bars, but I'm glad I didn't, and I'll talk to you about that when those come out in my final review of those bars. But I use recipes kind of as a guide, and then I adapt with, if I don't have a specific item, I can substitute, or if I don't like a particular item, I can substitute and I can try to make things my own. And I hope you find by watching my videos that you get some freedom in the kitchen, that it's supposed to be a place to just enjoy and not feel stifled. It's a place to feel empowered and free because it's your kitchen and you can do whatever you want. You can add extra of this or take away little of that. And it's a place where you really ultimately can have a lot of control, especially in a world where we really don't have a lot of control on a lot of things. The kitchen is somewhere where we can really have ownership of what we make for ourselves and our family. We got all of our 
veggies all processed and prepped and ready to go. Our sausage is browning up nicely. We have some really nice browning on our sausage. That got a little dark there, but I think we're okay. So now we're gonna move on to our next step. We're gonna add our onions. And that's gonna help pick up those brown bits from the bottom of the pot. It's gonna help deglaze the pan. We're gonna add a little bit of salt to help draw out the moisture on that. The brown bits on the bottom of this pot are called the fond, and there is moisture naturally in vegetables, and you can use that to your advantage. It's good sometimes not to use nonstick because you want that flavor to be built up on the bottom of the pot, and then you can use your onions or vegetables or wine, broth, something like that to help release that stick on bits and add that flavor into your soup or stew or pan sauce or whatever you're making. There are two components of this soup just like there is in lasagna or three technically. You've got your red sauce base which is what we're making here, your cream cheesy layer base and your noodles. So while this is cooking we can actually get going on our cheese portion of this soup. I don't have ricotta cheese, but I have cottage cheese, and we're gonna use cottage cheese, but I don't want the texture of cottage cheese, I want it to be smoother than that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our cottage cheese in our bowl, and then I'm gonna take a stick blender and I'm gonna blend this just to make it smooth. All right, so that is definitely more ricotta cheese texture. Gotta get all this goodness out of the blade. Can you see how that's no longer curd-like? It's ricotta cheese-like, so that's perfect. So then what we're gonna do to this is we need to grate some Parmesan. So we're gonna use the rest of this because a lot of this is rind, so I'm gonna cut the rind off. This is the real deal stuff from Italy. You know that because it's stamped on the rind right here. We're gonna get the rind off. You can save this and use this to make delicious broths. Now we're gonna take some mozzarella cheese and we're gonna grate this as well. I get questions on how I keep my five pound blocks of cheese from Azure Standard fresh from going bad and I never freeze my cheese, hardly, hardly ever. The reason a lot of times we get mold on cheese is actually we have the spores on our hands and when we touch cheese, those spores transfer from our hands onto the cheese and you can get spoilage of cheese. That is why pre-shredded cheese tends to go bad faster than block cheese because you're touching it. And so what I do is I just cut a section off that I'm gonna use and I just shred what I'm gonna use for that recipe and maybe one or two more meals down the road. So I'm not touching the block of cheese. I'm trying to keep it in its original packaging as much as possible and then I just rewrap it up. I rarely ever have anything go bad and I can keep cheese fresh even open for about a month. Now we have our three cheeses. We're gonna add some Parmesan in here and mozzarella in here. I grated a little bit more than I needed of both because we're gonna use it as garnish. We still need to season this. We're gonna add a little bit of salt and some pepper. We're gonna mix that up. And this is our cheese component. There we go. Beautiful. So this is looking beautiful. The onions are getting nice and tender. So I'm gonna add some garlic. We're gonna save some of that garlic for our zucchini. We're gonna saute that for a minute. 
And then I'm going to put some of our tomato powder in here instead of opening a whole can of tomato paste just for a few tablespoons. This is just tomato powder and you can use it just like you would tomato paste. We freeze dried this together. I'm going to stir that in and brown those tomato powder flakes. Get some caramelization on those. That'll help thicken and deepen the flavor of this dish. I'm going to add some freeze-dried homegrown basil. A good amount of that. And we have some home dehydrated oregano. We're going to add some of that as well. And home dehydrated parsley. Gardening is such a funny thing. Last year, I grew so much parsley. I had parsley coming out my ears. This year, I hardly grew any parsley. So the parsley that's gonna get us through this fall and winter is gonna be the parsley from last year. We ate a lot of parsley out of the garden, but it was just fresh parsley, not enough to really preserve. So if you have a bumper crop of something, that's awesome because you never know if the next year it's not gonna produce. Or if you have a year where it doesn't produce, do not fret try again because the next year it might be a bumper crop. We're gonna stir that together. We're getting some more browning on the bottom of our pot again. So we're just building the flavors. We're gonna deglaze the pot again, but I wanna get some yummy toastiness on the garlic and that powder we put in there. Now we really need to deglaze this pan because it's getting pretty dark. So we're going to add some of our homemade chicken stock. And that'll scrape up any of those bits on the bottom. And we need to add one and a half jars of chicken stock. Then we're going to add one jar of our homegrown home canned tomatoes. You know, that pot's not very full. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this broth and we'll let it just simmer down. Need to add a little bit of pepper and some salt. I forgot to add some red pepper flakes. We basically have this dinner pulled together. We probably have another 20 or so minutes on our blueberry, that's probably enough, pie. Because I used frozen blueberries and there was quite a bit of ice on those blueberries, I think it's gonna take a little bit longer to bake. And we need to have our soup simmer away for, I don't know, what does the recipe say? I am kind of following a recipe because I've never made this before. It doesn't even say, but I know, it, it doesn't say you need to simmer it, but I know soup tastes better when you simmer it. So we're gonna let it simmer for probably 30 or so minutes. I want, I don't wanna cook my zucchini yet because it'll get really soggy and mushy. So I'm gonna go sit down, relax for a few minutes while this just does its thing on the stove. I wanna show you what it's looking like. I can see on the outside parts, it's starting to get done, but it's not done on the inside yet. So we're gonna let that cook for a little bit longer. The recipe calls for frozen spinach and I don't feel like going downstairs. So I have some freeze dried kale and spinach. So I'm gonna add that to this and I'm gonna let this just simmer away instead of running downstairs to get frozen spinach. gonna get some whipped cream made up even though it's not dinner time yet I'll just make it up now and then we can pop it in the fridge and I'll be ready when the dessert is done or the dessert is done now but when it's cool and ready to eat that's just some heavy whipping cream I'm gonna put about a tablespoon and a half of sugar in there you can use powdered sugar or white sugar some vanilla and all we're gonna do, oh shoot. Well that is 
very disappointing to spill that much vanilla on the ground. Oh well. Oh well. So I always have vanilla going. Note to self, close the lid right when you're done using it. Back to our regularly scheduled program. We're just going to whip this up. I made some pretty thick whipped cream. So I'm just going to put this in the fridge and it'll be ready for our pie when we're ready to eat. We're gonna get going on our zucchini. I really like to have browned zucchini, not just steamed zucchini. So I put it in the pan and then I try really hard not to touch it for a long time to make sure that some of the zucchini gets nice and dark and toasty. Because it can be hard to get that browning on your zucchini, I try to add the salt toward the end instead of the beginning. I don't want that salt to release the moisture out of the zucchini because then you're gonna get steamed zucchini instead of seared zucchini. I am gonna add our garlic that we minced up earlier. So to this, I'm gonna add garlic salt. Here's some black pepper. And now I'm gonna go ahead and stir it. You can see, look at that. We have nice color on our zucchini. I'm going to turn this off. I want to keep some texture to the zucchini. And I'm going to add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top. Just for a little extra. To our soup pot, we need to add our noodles. And for this, I'm going to, let's see how it goes. I guess you just break them into pieces. So this is a 12 ounce box, so I think I'm gonna put half of them in here. Our zucchini turned out perfect. This zucchini was delicious. I love just simple seared zucchini in cast iron. We let the noodles simmer away for about six to eight minutes and then they were perfectly cooked. And we're going to pull this dinner together and I'm going to give you the final review of both the soup and the dessert. So the way that this recipe says to serve this is to serve up your soup in a bowl and then you're going to top your bowl with your cheese mixture. And I was not honestly a big fan of serving it this way because the soup, yes, was hot, but your cheese mixture is kind of cold and so it didn't melt into the soup and get super ooey gooey like you would want. So what I ended up doing is putting the entire, you can see here, it, you kind of had to stir in the cheese mixture and then you weren't getting that cheese pull that you want when you are eating lasagna. So what I did is I went ahead and I dumped the cheese mixture right into the pot and I stirred it in. It got melty and ooey gooey and was really delicious. Would I make this recipe again? Probably not. Josh and I both thought this was delicious. It tasted great, but we both agreed that we prefer lasagna, traditional lasagna. And so I probably won't make this again. You can see now we have the cheese pull that we want. And I didn't feel like it was that much less work than making lasagna because you still had to make all the steps. So I will link this recipe down below if you are interested in wanting to try it yourself. Now, when it comes to these pie bars, I overbaked them. I don't know if I end up showing you the bottom, but I baked them so much that it almost became like a cookie on the bottom. And these were so good. The one thing is I did reduce the sugar. The recipe called for a third a cup of sugar in both the blueberry and the yogurt layer. And I probably next time if I make these would omit the sugar in both those layers because it was plenty sweet from the sugar that was in the crust. So this was super good, but it was on the sweet side and I did overbake it. 
They will get eaten, they are delicious, but just note for future if I ever make this recipe again. I wanna say thank you for hanging out with me as we did our hauls and we cooked dinner and it feels good to be back in the kitchen. I'm glad I'm feeling better and I wanna say thank you. I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye friend.